Hey look, it's Ryan. He makes videos about living in Ecuador, so you will know what it's like. Actually, I heard he's just making them to collect views and feed you ads so he makes money. Is that blood? This video is about the street hustlers of Ecuador, the people that make their living by selling, begging, or entertaining on the streets. Like these young chaps, who are tooting their horns and zipping their zoodles. If only we could hear it. Maybe we can put our own music to it. Yeah, run through with my team. Dropping them hits like Blitz. I bought my cheese like Ritz. Fuck a vacate on trip. Y'all don't know people like this. 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 So I'm calling these people street hustlers, but that's probably not a great name for them. Hustler sometimes comes with a negative connotation. I mean hustler is in a person that is determined to succeed, a go-getter. In the streets of Ecuador, the most common sellers you see are selling fruits and vegetables. They usually are sold in these long plastic bags and the price is a dollar. It's nice and easy, everyone knows the cost, you can quickly make a transaction. It's actually one of the cheapest places to buy produce. Here's a guy selling five avocados for a dollar. In the grocery store or market, you usually get two for a buck, so it's a pretty good deal. Some of these people are actually farmers or they have a fruit tree on their property and they're just simply selling what they don't need. Rather than renting out a stand, they just find a stoplight. But most of these people are buying bulk fruits from the wholesale market and simply hitting the streets. Of course, there are a ton of negatives that come with selling in the streets. You're out in the sun all day, the pollution. It's not an ideal working environment. The alternative is to start a stand in the market. The price to rent a space to sell in the market is pretty cheap. I couldn't find up-to-date numbers, but in 2005, it was about $150 a year to have a stand in a municipal market. That's like 50 cents a day. But the problem is you have to pay it in three installments. So $50 up front, which most of the street sellers can't afford that much money at one time. They're living day to day. They also can't take the day off to go file the permits because they're out in the streets hustling seven days a week. So a lot of these people are out here treading water. They're doing it to get by, just making enough to get by for the one day. Produce isn't the only thing being sold. You'll see people selling car accessories, toys, candy. Lately, I've seen a lot of masks for sale. These guys that look like Ninja Turtles sell energy drinks and are obviously hired by a company to sell at the traffic lights. We'll also see people selling services, mainly just a quick wash over your windshield. So who are these people? Of course, they're economically disadvantaged. A lot of them are women. A lot are indigenous or immigrants from a neighboring country. There are a ton of immigrants in Ecuador from Venezuela. If you don't know what's happening in Venezuela, it's really bad. 94% of Venezuelans live in poverty. In 2017, 75% of the population lost an average of over eight kilograms or 19 pounds. The people there are simply starving, so a lot of them have come over to Ecuador. And then when COVID-19 happened, everyone had to stay home, and so many people couldn't make a living. The government offered some financial support, but only if you're Ecuadorian, so a lot of the people who just arrived from Venezuela, they had no source of income. I immediately started noticing a difference in the streets. A lot more people were begging for money. Every day I see it, it's, it's really heartbreaking. You wanna help them, but at the same time, you know, you read about how you shouldn't give beggars money, but maybe this is a special circumstance. I don't know, it's, it's really hard. Also in a country like Ecuador, where they don't have a lot of help for the disabled, this selling in the streets is a good way for somebody, it's not a good way, but it's a way for somebody who's disabled, who can't get a regular job to make a bit of money to get by. There have been a lot of cops out lately. I think they're trying to crack down on all the COVID restrictions here watching for people who shouldn't be driving. They're always setting up traffic stops where they check your license, your ID and everything, which in my opinion is an invasion of privacy. It's done in Canada at sobriety checkpoints, which kind of bothers me as well, but 
at least it seems more necessary than the random stops I have to make in the middle of the day. We'll just drive into the store here. So the more fun version of the street hustler are the people performing. Whether they're mimes, jugglers, musicians, dancers, they usually have less than a minute to show off their skills and then they come along the cars looking for tips. Surprisingly, a lot of the people in this business aren't from Ecuador. Performers come from other South American cities to perform in the streets of Ecuador. Why? Apparently, Ecuador is more generous and respects the art more. At least that's what one performer said in an article in Cuenca High Life. Some of these people are very skilled and I'm sure they make a decent amount of money. It's actually a pretty good stage. Board drivers, new crowd every few minutes. You're performing for people that have a car and therefore have some money probably. But the job is also dangerous. Every year you hear about a performer getting hit by a car. When you get out of the city and onto the highway, you get a different kind of street hustler. People will set up makeshift stands and sell large quantities of fruit. Right now it's mango season. I can get a case of mangoes for just $3. Driving through different towns, you'll find the specialties of the area being sold at the side of the road. A lot of cheese for some reason, but probably the most popular thing to sell in Ecuador along the highway is ice cream or helados de palo, ice cream on a stick. These little ice cream popsicle things are famous in Ecuador. They're essentially ice cream, fruit, and sugar. They come in all sorts of flavors. These were first created by nuns back in the 50s in a small city just south of here called Salcedo. Salcedo is just south of Latacunga on the Pan Am Highway, and going through that town, you'll be waved at by ice cream vendors every three seconds. They actually have a giant ice cream monument that greets you when you arrive in the city. Definitely not hard to find an ice cream in Ecuador. Just look for somebody waving a sign. It's a great way to pass some time when you're stuck in traffic. All right, that's all for this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos about living in Ecuador, which was recently voted the sixth best place to retire. I'd say it's a bit closer to number one, but it all depends on what you're looking for. Prefer when I'm by myself. I don't wanna hang around y'all. Pray for good health. One day I'm gonna go ma. Fuck around and buy the home ma. Breaking that cake. Flexing 700 in the bank. Not a superhero, I'm safe. Look at my face. Look at my grace. Don't make